The water boiling here probably had its origins high in the mountains from raindrops that poured over the forest canopy, trickled down to the soil and to this stream in the island's interior. It is almost unimaginable starting a day without a cup of tea or coffee or without that early morning shower before heading to work. In fact, imagine for a moment a day without water. The water cooler would be empty and the washroom unusable. Certainly, it would be impossible for schools to function if there were a severe water shortage. Large and small businesses would be severely impacted. Hotels are unlikely to open if there were no water for guests to shower or to refill the swimming pool. Now imagine a week, a month, and an entire dry season without water. Like oxygen, life depends on water. Under our 2004 water policy, we speak about water for health and sanitation, water for agriculture, water for industry, um, water for recreation, and also very important, uh, water for the environment. In 2020, farmers in St. Lucia experienced severe drought conditions probably the worst since the droughts of 2015 and 2016. The dry spells of the future are expected to be more intense because of climate change. This will have a devastating impact on the island's water sources. The projections are we would see more dry, dry spells, more drought conditions, the temperatures will increase. So that is another area where we lose water. There is a prediction of anywhere between a 15 and a 25 percent reduction in precipitation, in rainfall. Now that's significant for countries such as ours that depend on rainfall for our water supply. There are certain periods during the dry season that we are very, very stressed and, um, and it has implications for various users. So in terms of uh, more dry, dry spells and the drought conditions, it affects all sectors because uh, the water resources cross-cutting across all sectors. The water sector is probably the one that is most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and in many, many different ways. The greatest harm to St. Lucia's water supply comes from hurricanes and other violent storms. Water sources and the infrastructure face their greatest threat during the hurricane season. The strength, you know, of those uh, tropical events, those hurricanes, you know, has increased. And they're causing, you know, a lot more damage, you know, than we would have experienced in the past. Sustainable land management to ensure protection of forest and river systems is critical to minimizing the impacts of climate change on the water supply. The Forestry Division and the Water Resources Management Agency plays a central role in this. We have approximately 25,000 acres of forest reserves. A significant portion of the, um, the forest is private land and there is not a land use policy in terms of saying, um, dictating how those lands can be used, so you definitely have to work with them to let them see that um, there are other ways of getting a livelihood from those lands because in terms of the, um, uh, the, the protection of the water resources, I mean, those lands play a vital role in, in, in that aspect. We divide the watersheds um, based on how they feed into the major rivers. In St. Lucia, in particular, we need to revisit our watersheds. We have a number of watersheds in St. Lucia that are now not functioning to the capacity that they were before because of some of the developments that we've allowed to take place in and around those watersheds. Well, we're in the first line of monitoring, so when we see that there is an issue, then we definitely have to go to speak to our uh, stakeholder partners because 
the water comes from the land and everybody resides on the land. So you realize that uh, our partners are everyone. Very, very, very tricky situation because this is an issue of property rights. It's, it's a matter of working with the, the, the developer to actually design the initiative in a way which doesn't significantly impact the water resources. So I think the first thing we need to do is to have a proper land use plan that is built around our watersheds because really our watersheds are the most critical part of life in St. Lucia. If you don't have water, you cannot sustain life in this country. We can't go to being a country that has an abundance of rivers to one where we have to be importing um, water into this country. It's just not viable. It's not economically viable and it would cause serious social disruption. Government may need to acquire private water catchments to ensure that water sources and courses are protected. Government may also have to consider the introduction of mandatory river reserves. Healthy rivers depend on healthy rainforest. But our forest, even those deep in the island's interior, are under severe threat from climate change impacts as well as ill-advised agricultural practices and deforestation. So it's very critical, you know, that we uh, manage and, you know, protect the forest resources, the soil resources, uh, which is integrally connected, you know, to the water resources. Under the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, a number of interventions are being supported related to increasing resilience in the water sector to climate change and natural hazards. At the watershed level, a climate resilient integrated watershed management framework and plan for specific watersheds prone to flooding, as well as a national wastewater management strategic plan were developed. The Water Resources Management Agency and Forestry Division are also involved in other ongoing efforts towards sustainable land management, including working towards sustainable agricultural practices. So, for example, to prevent farming, livestock farming, um, use of pesticides in areas that were too close to water because you also have to protect the quality of the water. It's not just the, the quantity of the water but the quality of the water. So we have to work with our farming community with the agricultural sector to ensure that they see themselves as custodians of that water supply because they depend on water. Without water they can't survive but we also can't have agriculture destroying our watersheds by some of the places where we plant, by some of the practices that we do. So there must be a partnership. Um, farmers are also encouraged to uh um, partaking in you know, certain um, techniques, techniques such as um, bench terracing, um, also intercropping whereby they use the forest cover and not necessarily um, deplete the curse forest cover through slash and burn, but um, plant crops within the forest, use the forest cover and, and, and plant within the forest. They utilize the land, so whatever it is that uh, they do to the land, whether it is probably deforestation or bad agricultural practices, this is reflected in the rivers and the water is also the quality and the quantity could be diminished. If the forest is destroyed, the land becomes exposed completely to the elements. So when the rain falls, it runs, you know, as the surface water. And because there would be open sunlight, you'd get a lot of, you know, uh, transpiration, evaporation, and you get a uh, a significantly less volume of water flowing into the rivers. We encourage um, farmers to avoid planting um, near river buffers, um, buffer zones, riverine buffers, to so maintain the forest cover around um, the rivers. Another area would be basic water quality, um, um, not just for sedimentation, but for the, for the use of certain pesticides and whatnot. Um, farmers are encouraged to to um, hit the advice of the extension officers and use the not use excessive um, pesticides and, and fertilizers when they, 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 they plant or they, they plant the produce to actually use uh, more sustainable practices in keeping, in keeping with best practices. Again, agricultural practices, maybe some livestock um, farming that especially if it's right near the water resource, we need to look into those and make sure that um, the, the quality of that resource is not compromised, especially if you're looking at an area upstream 
of a, of a Wasco, Wasco intake. We were looking at the issue of the feral pigs, Kosho Mao, you know, within the forest reserve and on some of the private lands. Now, we call them feral pigs because these are the same domestic pigs that have escaped and they are back, you know, roaming free and wild. And they are redeveloping, you know, wild instincts. Feral pigs are very intelligent animals and they are very opportunistic and they can have a devastating effect on the forest. They will dig the roots, you know, of the forest. They will eat certain plants, you know, within in the forest. And that can weaken, you know, the resilience of the, the forest against um, natural events. Residential and commercial developments also contribute to the pollution of water courses. The improper dumping of solid waste, sewage, and industrial chemicals impacts water quality and consequently the nation's health. Solid waste disposal is causing many of our water courses to be clogged. And as the water, as water courses become clogged, we have problems with flooding. We as an agency, we've gone to some areas, some waterfalls that people frequent, and you go and you see um, beer bottles, you see plastics, you see um, tins, so persons just have a good time and then they just abandon, you know, the trash on the side there. So, so, so definitely this is um, one of the areas as well that we'd like persons to know that they need to take heed of and to keep the environment as clean as, as possible. Um, we know that could actually impact um, the watershed, the quality of water, especially if these activities occur above the Wasco intakes because the water feeds into the Wasco um, system and it, end up, it, it ends up into the, the processing plant, which is actually harder to treat if the water is more polluted. Active interventions are required to restore the forest and protect the water supply from climate change and local human impacts. Some watersheds may need to be reforested with native tree species. This stabilizes soil, encourages infiltration of water in the soil, and as such, ensures that soil erosion, stormwater runoff, and the risk of landslides are minimized. There have been initiatives under the, um, the World Bank initiatives um, to do reforestation activities um, above um, certain intakes in the upper reaches of the watershed. So under the, the DVRP program, we also propose to rehabilitate our main nursery, you know, at Union, um, because the production, you know, then of, of plants would support, you know, any reforestation or even distribution of, you know, plants, you know, to communities, to farmers. Um, the nursery is very critical. You know, you have a, a watershed, for example, like the Maki watershed, where during the rainy season there's a lot of water, but during the dry season there's a precipitous drop in the, the, the flow of, of water in the Maki River. That is something that we have to address, see how maybe through reforestation and protection of the river banks, etc., we can cause some of these watersheds to, to be a lot more even than they are. To address the impacts of climate change, smarter approaches to water management are also being pursued to better manage the available water resource. Under the DVRP, significant investment was made to rehabilitate and enhance the system of hydrometeorological stations across the island that monitor rainfall and river levels, helping water management agencies make more strategic decisions. In addition, under the DVRP, investment has been made in a system of bulk water meters, which will significantly reduce the high proportion of water lost in the distribution system as it travels from the treatment plant to customers by helping WASCO to pinpoint hidden leaks. Better water storage capacity remains a challenge to smarter water resource management. 
we need uh, rainfall on a consistent basis because um, uh, one of the things is we don't have a lot of storage. We have a lot of water um, during the wet season, but in terms of our capacity to store now. We try to mitigate that through the John Compton Dam, which is constructed it, uh, to actually augment the, the supply, increase the supply during the wet season, have enough for the dry season. So I think increasing storage capacity at the domestic level, um, increasing storage capacity at the community level. Many of our communities do not have the, the, the level of water storage that they require. You know, communities grow, more people move in, but we're not increasing the storage capacity, the water storage capacity commensurate with the increase in the population. So that certainly has to be looked at. The community has a big part to play in helping to build resilience in the water sector. One surefire way to do this is through water harvesting and advised water conservation measures. The DVRP included a rainwater harvesting pilot program, which produced a code of ethics, a training manual for plumbers, and provided training to build capacity to support more widespread and safe installation of rainwater harvesting systems throughout St. Lucia. Water is treated as a treasure and trash in the same year because in the drought, you know, everybody's looking for water, everybody's conserving, but once the water returns to the tap, then it's going back to the same old practices. So what we would like for persons to continue doing, you know, continuing those um, conservation practices. The certain um, um, smart um, water saving devices, if you're getting a, a, an appliance like a washing machine, you try to get one which is water efficient, um, which gives you options to conserve water, reuse water, um, um, low flush, flush toilets are options, aerators for your faucets. Um, these, these, are, these are also options. Um, so there's little things that the, the public can do. The St. Lucia Development Bank has affordable loans through its Climate Adaptation Financing Facility, the CAF, available for households, farms and businesses to implement water harvesting systems and water conservation measures. Surveying that next glass of water might appear to be simple today. But if the community and policymakers do not act decisively, water scarcity can easily become a solution reality with the full onset of climate change. Let's partner with government and do our part as citizens to protect St. Lucia's water supply for current and future generations.